Hey everybody, welcome to the Pixel Buzz Podcast for January 12th, 2014. I'm Andy Ryan, um, back from sick leave. I caught the bug, was out with the flu last week. Um, joining me as always is my co-host Dave DeWert. Dave, what you been playing this week? Or the last couple of weeks, anyway? Yeah, whatever. Um, well, okay, so... Like you're, like you're the picture of perfect health at all times throughout the year. Whatever! <laughs> it's fine. I do alright. Um, I, I actually, I, I bought a Yee's, uh, what is it, Memories of Celtic? Celsius? What's that? Yeast. No, you mean ease? Yeast, whatever. <laughs> that, that, yeast. Vita, that Vita East game. Like, whatever. Like E A S E, like you have a lot of ease in doing something, yes. but instead of the S sound, it's a C sound. Whatever. Anyway, I, I bought that game for the Vita. The Yeast yes. Memories of Celsia. Better. Close Celsedia. enough. Celsia. Celsia. Whatever. I'm forgetting letters. <laughs> um, it's actually a lot of fun. I, I looked into it and I was like, all right. Yeast games are fun, you don't fucking say. I, you know what? I've never played a yeast game before. A yeast <laughs> game before. Um, we'll get there. <laughs> I, uh, and, and, you know, playing that kind of got me looking into the other games of the series. And it's like, oh, it's like a Zelda clone, except you just run into the mobs to do damage to them. Yeah, well... Um, in in the older games, the new saying one it's more it's, like a actiony yeah, RPG. Yeah, saying that it's a, that the first E is a Zelda clone. I didn't say a Zelda clone. It's a, it's a Zelda like game, I guess. Okay, Zelda like. I mean, that's kind of kind of I dumping mean, on it. No, it's not really. It's like a cross true, between Zelda and Final is, Fantasy. Because it was a PC game. Mm -hmm. um, well, before I think Zelda was around. Or maybe I'm thinking of uh, effects I'm into and stuff like that. Yeah, I, either way, like I, I looked into like but it's another yeah, it's another way of action RPG. -ing. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun. I kind of like the, you know I really like the party system like in that music? game. The music in that game is like it's a lot of like crazy guitar is, riffs and stuff. East, it's, East music is awesome. Um, I was like, all right. But eventually, you like, know, it, it's pretty cool. Some monsters up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool when you when you first start listening to it. But it gets a little tiring after a while. Um, mm -hmm. Hearing well, I've been running through areas like trying oh, to do the hundred, back back back. hundred, trying to hundred percent the sections of the map that I'm in now. Yeah. Um, so you know, hearing the same thing for like thirty minutes, yeah. it kind of sucks. See, the, the most recent East game I played was East Seven, um, and yeah, that's probably and that runs good. into a lot of like I got to, I'm pretty far. Either I beat it or I'm like right up on the last boss fight. Um, but yeah, I can agree that some of the themes get kind of wonky. Um, yeah, you get, you get tired of it. And then um, I've been playing a lot of Borderlands, but not with you because we can never seem to find out how to get our schedules lined up. Uh, and, you know, coming from playing Borderlands 2 on the PC and then playing it on the console, it, it's a big shift, right? Because you're used to this and then you go to this. But the auto-aiming kind of helps. And <laughs> what? Used to this. This. So used to, to this. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, no, no. Two really big track mount, track balls, going like this. Um, but you know what I mean. You're used to keyboard and mouse, and you do this. Um, you know that, that it's just interesting to me because I've never really made that jump from playing one version of the game on a PC and then playing the console version of that game. And it's like you know, the sniper sway on the PC version is like this. Yeah. And on the P on the P PS3 version, it's like hardly noticeable at all. So it's like you don't even need those talents on the sniper to, to do that. Um, but it's still fun. It's still, you know, the loot grind Diablo mm -hmm. meets Doom game. Yep. It's amazing. And it's funny. Like, like when we talked about it before, I said the only, the only reason there needed to be a Borderlands 2 is because the story is so funny. It is, yeah. And, and, and the I'm interaction is so funny. Like that gameplay and is really just the same as it was before. Well, and the gameplay is, it, I don't want to say it's the same as every other first-person shooter, but for the most part, it kind of is. No, like, I it, mean, you're talking about, like, the strict... It's first-person shooter yeah, game. When you say gameplay, you're saying, I, you know, have WSS... Well, yeah, yeah, there's... Like this, I have one stick goes... One, one, one stick six movement, one stick's looking. When I say gameplay, I mean, like, the game part of mm -hmm. it. You know, like, yeah. if it were... Sorry, or if it was a board game mm. that didn't have a story, when I say gameplay, that's what I mean. Yeah, and it's you know it's it's still really fun. I still like the the it's randomly still really enjoyable seeing numbers pop out of things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you tag something with a corrosive weapon. Little green numbers just fly off in every direction. Like, yeah, I did that. And you know the midgets are still probably yeah. the the funniest things mm -hmm. in that game. Um, and occasionally you'll get like the super big nomad that's got the midget on a shield. Mm -hmm. If you shoot the nomad and don't kill the midget. Sometimes he'll help you. Mm. Sometimes. Most of the time he'll just run at you and try to kill you. But 
It's you know, it's it's Borderlands two, and it's free on Plus for a while now, right? Yeah. Like it, it's probably going to come off it's whenever. It's not going to get cycled off for a while. You don't think so? I I would think that it would get cycled off before. Um, uh, what is that? Bioshock, Bioshock becomes yeah, free. They're both, they're both from 2K, so that could be it. But I think it will probably stay longer. Because if not, that's a that's a pretty quick on and off cycle for what PS Plus has been doing. Well, there's some games that they do that though. It only it's only on there for like a month and then it disappears. Yeah. Um, and just that's just a publisher thing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've been playing. I looked at DMC, and I'm like, okay, it's a Devil May Cry game. It's kind of weird, but I'll, I'll definitely... How long did they take you to download? I don't know. I set it to download before I went to bed, and it was done the next day, and I just forgot to turn my PS3 off. So you had to sleep. I didn't have to. to. <laughs> I didn't have to. When I, I had started it, and then I went and made dinner, and that was like an hour, and it was like halfway done. So, mm. yeah, I know. Google Fiber's the shit. Ooh. I'll get it eventually when, you know, Google makes its way north of the river. Yeah. Jerk. Anyway, so what have you been up to? Um, well, I've been sick. Oh, yeah, obviously. So before that, I was lots playing... Of, lots of Vita games, right? Yeah, so before that, I was playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIII 2, which everybody was enjoying. And as I went back and played Final Fantasy XIII 2, started playing it and started, you know, mm -hmm. looking back on my time with Final Fantasy XIII, I realized how much I liked the characters and the story in thirteen. Except for Snow. Yeah, except for Snow. <laughs> um, which in 13.2 he continues to like not be my favorite character. Um, Still a jerk. I mean, I can understand like looking back on it, I can understand why he's a jerk and a huge cock ass. But at the same time, I'm like, mm. just stop. <laughs> um, he's the Vaughn and Pinello of those games, which is funny because you would think Hope would be the Vaughn and Pinello of those games since he's the small child. But no, nope. I actually liked Hope's story about being. Uh, an, an orphan because of this thing that Snow yeah, started. Yeah, and then his dad coming in and saying, no, you know, you're my son, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And, um, but as, so I was playing 13 too. So anyway, uh, we won't talk about that that much today, because of a Sunday night, Saturday night, I started to feel bad, and then Sunday I was full bore in the flu. Just, just bedridden, can't move. Yeah, pretty much. So I downloaded Final Fantasy VI on my Vita, and because I was like, Matt. I need something that I can play that's not that in my face. And that I can kind of pause and put down and, and, and pass and out. And come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I once again realized, you know, Final Fantasy VI is really the unsung gem of the Final Fantasy series. In you know, everyone says seven's the best, or everyone has their opinion of what the best is. You know, personal favorite of mine is five and twelve. And but I'm pretty sure nobody says eight. People say eight. There are, there there are some are, people that say eight. There but are people on the internet. There are fewer people that say eight than say like nine or or three. Well, <laughs> people have, I, I found out that, I'm trying to think of the least sexist way to say this. I, I found out that a lot of um, role playing gamers that mm -hmm. are female um, have a much higher opinion of eight and ten than I do. Um, I could see that, I guess. Like, the only reason I'm buying the HD remasters of 10 is to give it another is, shot. Is to hope that the they'll make 12. 12 like, on <laughs> portable. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to buy 10 because I actually like most of 10. I don't like the Blitzball minigame thing, but I like most of 10. I said most. I didn't say all. Um, I, and I'm replaying 10 on the PS2. I so. like less. Maybe I need to replay it again, but because I, I only played it through once and was like, I'm done. <laughs> It was the sphere grid, right? Like, you hated that. It's just... It's like Materia, except huge. Yeah. <laughs> and when they when on 13.2, they rearranged the Crystarium mm -hmm. um, to be less like the sphere grid. <laughs> but it's still, like, the sphere grid. It's still, like, oh. At least, at least with what I remember of... of like, the people complained about the license board in 12. I loved that shit. Because, because it was side of, quests, right? Yeah, and by the end of the game, everyone's license board was totally filled out. Mm -hmm. So all that mattered is, what Eidolons do I want to use in this battle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could spec every character how I wanted them to mm -hmm. be. So then it just really mattered on me going back and going, okay, Balthier is a better ranged fighter. Yeah. So I want to spec him this way. Just based on his normal base stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like in thir what I ended up with in 13, where I specced Fang, Lightning as my main character, and Hope, not knowing that, like, because uh, I was using Hope as a um, well, I mean, buffer slash saboteur slash magic user, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, no, because I, I was months later when I finally got the 
uh, strategy guide yeah. and looked in, and they're like, no, don't spec home th hope that way. Spec uh, vanille that way. Yeah, vanille's, vanille's like, a lot better buffer, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they they only have certain roles they can play in a fight anyway. Yeah. But yeah, they are some characters are specifically better in group combat. Yes. Group comp. Like if you, doing if, you those totally jobs. if you didn't have Vanille, Hope would be your guy to yeah. do that kind of stuff. Like but if, if Vanille's around, totally she's way better at it. Everyone's Crystarium all the way. Mm -hmm. There were still if you if if Hope and Vanille are buffed as a Ravager the, the, with the exact same, you know, they, yeah, they yeah. filled out their Crystarium, Vanille has abilities that Hope does not have. Yeah. Um, where the license board was just fill this thing in and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has all these abilities, but they're better through, suited like, for this. Unlock them and yeah. figure out where they are on their single license board. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, across all of the Final Fantasies, um, it's very clear that six, from a story aspect, from a gameplay aspect, is the best. Mm -hmm. um, and it people complain that you can't customize your characters as much as you can in later installments. And but I mean, it was a super system. NES game, so yeah. yeah. But like you know, you're coming off of five, and you can spec the job. Yeah, system. yeah, they had a the really but neat like, job system in five. Yeah, but like how they balance that is, you just have a huge roster a certain, of characters. Yeah, after a certain point in the game, your whole roster of characters open, and it asks you like, hey, who do you want to take with you? Yeah, who do you want on this thing? Do you want it to be Terra, Locke, and Shadow, Celis, and Shadow, or do you <laughs> want like I always keep Saban in my party mm -hmm. because his little, um, it's not called guts. What's it called? No idea. The is it is it, it Blitz? The, the Street Fighter moves. You have to do Street Fighter moves. Oh, shit. Um, they always do, like, hilarious amount, wonderful amounts of damage, and you can keep building up his magic so that he can, like, oh, I'm not going to do one of these this time. I'll just do a, you know, cure-all for everybody. A regular attack or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been really liking that. So he was, like, a monk, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that was his class. Yeah, well, uh, well Edgar, the class. Edgar is the engineer. Yeah. He's the one that can use all the tools. Mm -hmm. um, and Sabin is his twin brother, who mm -hmm. is the martial artist. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um... So, and I'm at the, the World of Ruin right now, and I'm probably going to go through and finish it just because I feel better now, and I have Why not? Vita. Now, is this the, this is the PS1 version, yes. right? Yeah, okay. Because um, I, I didn't know if maybe they had released, like, a port of the original SNES No, they still haven't done, because, you know, they've, they've, they've gone back and they, they've redone one in the super high resolution. Oh, and they did a PSP version PSP that was really nice. Um, they did the exact same thing for four. I think they did it for well, yeah, they two. Did one, and two. one and two were yeah, on I one, one UMD. And, and four. But they also did what I'm talking about. They did four. They also did that the thing they did with Final Fantasy three, where they bring it all into Polygon mm -hmm. land. They did that with four, but they've never gone back to six. Mm, no, like the, no, the no. Only no time I, yeah, they went they back haven't. to it was they redid parts of it, and it's not even really redone. They rebalanced parts of it mm -hmm. for the Game Boy Advance release. Yeah. Um, which was really just to bring it in with the Yeah, they've never really done like a, a, a up-res or no. re-whatever. And with the, the Game Boy Advance versions, I have all of them. You know, I have mm. four, five, and six. Mm. All they were really doing in those was rebalancing it and then bringing it in line with the nomenclature of the rest of the series yeah. of Cure, Cura, Cura. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all the, the spells Cura. make sense and they're, yeah. they're close enough in name. Instead of Fire, Fire 2, Fire 3. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, everything. Because, I mean, it's like Fire 3. Well, that's got to do more damage than Fire yeah. 1, right? Because, like, those of us that know the difference know the difference. Yeah. Or are actually the people that would be playing those anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, that brings me to a really interesting point of, like, digging back into Sony's back catalog and finding what you want to play. Oh, yeah. So, this past week, we weren't really going to... We didn't think, we told you a couple weeks ago, we didn't think there would be news there in was, January and February. And there was actually not, not just what we're going to talk about. There was other stuff, too, that, yeah. was, that was I found fairly interesting, but he, eh, whatever. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll start with that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so CES is not normally a video game show. No, not normally really. Normally CES is here's the TVs, here's the surround sound equipment, here's, you know, the fancy shit we're going to put in your car, here's yeah, yeah, your yeah. watch. And Google then here's class. all the junk that we already sell that we're just showing off again anyway. Yeah, like video games diverged themselves from CES in the mid-90s mm. and, and basically started E3 because they were getting lost in the shuffle. Yep. Um, so I really didn't think CES would have any gaming stuff. And it started off on the before the first day with uh, Valve coming out and saying, these are our 13 Steam boxes yep. and, and Gabe Newell being a huge prick. Um, Gabe, Gabe being Gabe. Well, you know, you know, guy runs a business that well, I'm sure. he has very little physical inventory on. Like, yeah. guy makes billions of dollars a year. Well, company makes billions of dollars a year, and all they do is sell you keys to video games. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and, and they make games, but they don't have like to print discs or anything yeah. like that. So. so as Steam is kind of uh, coming into its own, and, and the Steambox idea, I'm actually, the more I hear about the Steambox idea, the less likely I think it's going to sell. Yeah, uh, the, looking at the first round of Steam boxes, the ones they announced, like the lowest price point is five hundred bucks. Yeah, and we don't know, like, is that five hundred dollar machine like the baseline? You can play your games on this, or is this yeah. the bare minimum of okay? This is your streaming box. You still have to have your monster PC in yeah. the other room to do this. Like, like the Steam box audience seems to be Gabe going, "Hey, you already have a bunch of games on Steam, PC gamer. Wouldn't you love to play those on your couch?" But you can play a, them on your a, couch. Here's a device that we're going to sell you that does that. So you don't have to have your big PC in the living room. Yeah. Uh, because like a, a console gamer is not going to care because when we talk about the one thing consoles always have over PCs is it just works. Yeah, it just it's runs. It's just super easy. You it don't have to futs with it. It just don't makes have to it mess work. With it. Don't have to do anything. It it works. Yeah. It does what it does. You go to the store. You buy, you know, a box that has the same name on. It says it. PS3 on it, and, and then it'll it, run on your PS3. It works. Yeah. Um, Steam boxes don't do that. Steam, Not necessarily, yeah. Steam boxes are they're kind of like in this weird tiered format, and like if you're on the low tier Steam box, you might not be able to play the games that the high tier Steam box can play. And, yeah, and, and we've kind of kind of seen this play out with Microsoft with the like three different SKUs of their yeah. their Xbox 360s, and you know if you didn't have a hard drive on your 360, you couldn't install like half of Halo 2, and you would have to like switch discs in order to play multiplayer and whatever, and and you know that just that seems like that's still a big hassle. Yeah. I mean, I know that's like a first world hassle, right? Like, oh no, I gotta get up I and mean, change discs on my all, my all, Xbox. Everything but, we're talking about is first world problems. You know, it's it's not it's not end of the world type stuff. But um, yeah, the, the Steam boxes, I, they seem like a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. But for five hundred dollars, I could probably build a better machine. Yes, that's the other thing. And they're selling this to the audience, the, the PC gamers that already know. I could build a better machine with machine the same amount of money. money. You know, I'm, I'm sure they're going to sell a few of them. I'm sure it'll be moderately successful, but there's no mom out there that's going to buy a Steam Box. Yeah, well, there's and... There's a mom out there that will buy a Wii U or a PS4. Or, or an Xbox, Xbox One. One. Yeah, there will be. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it seemed like a really great idea, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And if I could just buy the controller and that's, then... We talked about this before. That's, like, that's why I'm amazed they're doing this, because mm -hmm. Gabe was part of DirectX, and when you read DirectX, it seems like a really good idea, mm -hmm. but then Gabe saw it play out, and that's why he left Microsoft. And it's... Is know. Gabe going to leave Valve once he sees on the Steam Box? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't no, think so. I, think, I hope I not. I think the Gabe of 1992-93 is the, a lot different than the Gabe of 2014. Of 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's... It, Sitting on my pile of money and giving asshole answers to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Where's Half-Life 3? Go screw yourself. Yeah. <laughs> here's okay. my knives. Here was, here was my thing. Like, I, told, I told Dave, I was like, you read everything Gabe Newell says, and if he ever says anything about Half-Life 3, you bring it to my attention. Everything else I don't need to I don't, know. We don't need to know. We don't, we don't care until Half-Life 3 comes out. Um, um, you know, it, and I thought, but the thing is, I thought that was going to be the, the video gaming news. For which CES. was just Valve saying, here's all our... Valve saying, here's because Steambox. it's all about tech, right? Yeah. Like, that's what CES is, is here's a bunch of new physical stuff you can buy. Yeah, and you don't really announce that at, like, GDC, because that's not really a game developer thing. That's a consumer end thing. The game developers don't care about Steam. No, 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 they don't care. It's a PC. Yeah, so we work um, on those things all the time. And do you think they would announce this at E show these off at E three? No. They would get steamrolled by PS3 by, and Xbox 360. More people would go to see what Nintendo was announcing than would than go what to see Valve the Steam was. Well, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think just as many people would go see <laughs> it, at E three. At E three. I don't I don't think it would do as well as like the Sony Microsoft stuff, right? Yeah. Like it would do fairly well, but I don't think it would be. Oh man, Nintendo! They got to be. They're, they're, let's go yeah. do that. Let's skip this Valve thing. Go see what Nintendo's doing. I don't think so. Um, I think that was probably like CES was probably the best time yeah, for them CES to, to go. The best Here is our first lot of of Steam boxes. And they're all more expensive than you want them to be. Yeah, they are. And they're all more. They're all less powerful than you want like, them to be. My my plan is but when I'm in a nice box. They, they come in a nice got, little form one, factor. They got one part of the console gaming experience correct. They are all aesthetically They're pleasing. All in that, that nice box. Yeah. Um, my plan is, is is just to tinker around with it is whenever I replace this laptop, it's going to be my Steam box. <laughs> mm. And I'm just going to be like, okay, you're going to be my streaming thing. I'll just play games on my big TV mm -hmm. from this. And then dual boot it so I can watch movies off of it okay. as well. So, so then um, later in that day, the, the Sony, the normal Sony before CS, we bring out our stuff and yeah. show you everything. And they announced some really weird things. They announced like a fit, 
a wristband that will link to your Sony network account and that will keep track of how much you exercise yeah, and how well you sleep. And that's not really that big a deal. Like we yeah. went, I, I went to Best Buy yesterday and there was like a ton of those types of mm -hmm. things. And I was like, oh, huh, okay. But I was like, when they didn't mention PlayStation at all, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is it, we're done. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much it. And then Cos came out and said, you know, start in CS, we're doing the keynote. And that kind of blindsided me, but in hindsight, I don't know why it did. Because he's because Kaz Kaz, Arai, yeah. yeah. Kaz started in Sony Entertainment, mm -hmm. Computer Entertainment, and then moved up. He moved up, up and up and up, up and up. now he's like one of the big guys. He is the big guy yeah. at Sony. And it makes total sense that like they would trot out the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. and especially because they're now sitting on good news all around for the PlayStation. Well, yeah, because they've sold 4.2 million PS4s. Yeah. Whereas the Xbox One has sold supposedly three million. Yes. Well, um, depending on how you do the math, there are either yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> it's weird. There are either a quarter more PS3s in the market than or Xbox Ones, or, or if you use the Xbox One numbers, there is a third more PS. Whatever. Uh, it's it's weird ratio math. But 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 but, but Sony's got a week on them. <laughs> yeah, they're on a very sizable lead at this point. Uh, yeah, board, and, and you know they're gonna very successful. They're gonna hit their five million by March. Oh, they'll March. probably hit their five million by the end of January. Probably, um, oh, which which is they're still selling out everywhere. And you which know, I don't think Sony. When you remember a couple months ago, when Sony was like, "Oh yeah, you'll be able. To, don't worry, you'll be able to find them." Oh yeah, and I don't think they expected this. Yeah, well, when you got a hundred dollar happy accident. <laughs> well, this is this is kind of what happened last time, right? Microsoft launched at a lower price point. They also came out first, but they launched at a lower well, price I think point. This is more like what happened with the Wii. Yeah, they launched. They didn't think they were going to sell like this huge allotment. And then they started selling it, and they were like, oh, we got to keep... We oh, crap, we're out. We kick up the production. Um, um, I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, I, I bought mine on a whim off of Amazon because they were on they were in stock for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got mine, but I could have... There were several other instances in which I could have gotten one before mm -hmm. the holidays. Yeah. So, you know, they, they made their promise. It's just you had to be, like, on your feet. You yeah, just you be to be ready, ready to pounce when it became uh, available to purchase. And, like, we're still seeing Xbox Ones on shelves. I mean, I went to Target yesterday. They had Xbox Ones yeah, on shelves. I, I asked if they had any PS4. They're like, no, we're sold out. We have, we're supposed to be getting some in on Thursday. Did you want to buy an Xbox One? Well, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't go that far to sell me. But mm. So Sony's sitting on, like, really nice. PlayStation brand is doing very yeah, well. It is. Vita has, a, like, a 30% upkick or something, 300% well, upkick. Yeah, and... and it's it's some insane number. This right? is completely anecdotal. Which is, which is funny because you see, like, the Vita sales chart go, like, like launch, nothing. <laughs> and then and PS4 came out. And then PS4, it's like... <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, this is a completely anecdotal thing, but, like, people on Reddit have been asking, not me, but, like, in general, just going, is it worth it just to buy the Vita for remote play? And I'm like, I guess if you really want a $200 portable TV, then, yeah, I guess it would be. But, you know... How... how how much, how much is it worth you worth to you for to never have to argue about the TV again? Yeah, and and that would, that's always been my answer when people ask me at work. Like, mm -hmm. how much? Like, if you could Dude, if, if you had to argue, never having to argue for that TV again. Yeah, uh, two hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and and it works pretty flawlessly. Now, there's been some times where, like the the, you know, my router is getting hammered because I'm doing something on my desktop while I'm doing something. I like, I I multitask like a bro. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so uh, I don't understand what that problem is. I don't understand. No, it, it has nothing to do with the internet. It has to do with the Wi-Fi in your house. I'm just saying, like, I don't have that problem. <laughs> that has, it's whatever, Dick. <laughs> Quit throwing Google Fiber in my face. Bam. <laughs> anyway, uh, I mean, but it works flawlessly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, there's no uh, hardly any lag time. You can play shooters on your Vita, um, although. I'm pretty terrible at it. You can still do yeah. it. Um, Getting used to not having those bottom triggers is kind of hard. Uh, yeah, but like with Assassin's Creed, they remapped it so yeah. that your run and whatever trigger, like the R2s are actually the triggers, and then the R1s and whatever are the touchback. Um, but like playing Don't Starve on the PS, on the Vita works fine. Like yeah. just running around, chopping down trees, trying not to get like eaten by Resident spiders. Like Resident works well. You know, we've, we've talked mm -hmm. about this before. So anyway, so Sony's sitting on a lot of really good news. Yes. And they decided with this CES... Portfolio, yeah. Platform, platforms—the word I wanted to use. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> to go, okay. Here's the next thing. And that, you remember that thing that we've always been talking about, and a lot of people have been bitching about how, oh, you know, I can't play my PS3 games on my PS4, or I can't play my PS2 games on my PS4. I can't play my PS2 games on my PS3. Why can't? You know, what happened to backwards compatibility? Blah, yeah. Blah blah blah. Guess so what? It's just 
figured that out. They, they bought Guy Kai like a year ago, year and a half ago, something two like years, that. Two years ago. So, so they've been working on integrating that into the PlayStation Network, and guess what? They have. Yeah. Uh, starting January, there'll be a closed beta in the, mm -hmm. for North America. North America. And it'll be th out. And they're hoping to launch it by summer. July in North America. Yeah, in, in North the United America. United States, the lower 48. Yeah. So screw you, Hawaii and Alaska, and your beautiful sunsets. Well, um, you know, it's kind of hard to run fiber across the ocean floor. Uh, they say it'll work with, uh, they're testing it right now with mm -hmm. 5 megabit speeds yep. because they were like, it has to work on your Vita, it has to work on your cell phone. So we need to figure out a way to get it to this very low bar. Yeah, the, the bandwidth has to be pretty, yeah. like, it has to be there, but it has to be no more than this. Yes. Like, that's their... So Minimum that's six bandwidth. months from the start of this closed beta, six months until mm -hmm. they're going to launch. Yeah. And the idea is that they'll start with PS3 games, but then in eventuality, they'll start shuffling in PS2, PS1 yeah. games. You'll, it's, it's amazing to me how they're already, already talking about how they're giving this to the consumer. So you'll be able to buy certain titles. You'll be able to rent certain titles. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to pay for a subscription service that will have a list a raft of titles a la Netflix instant streaming. Yeah, and, and I have a feeling just to kind of entice people to it, people who are already like plus members, mm -hmm. I have a feeling they'll probably be like, oh, this month you can stream this. Yeah. Probably well, like one, maybe two titles a month. Well, they'll, they'll say like, if you have the PSN copy of Borderlands 2, mm -hmm. you have the PS PlayStation Now, which is what they're calling it, yeah. copy of Borderlands 2. Yeah. Which to me would make total sense. Mm-hmm. And I would totally buy more of their stuff. So for me, there's... there's You're already option. heavily invested in yeah. a Sony thing. There's the option out there that I can play Final Fantasy 1 through 13 2 on my Vita, wherever I am. Mm -hmm. Pick that game up, that same save file at home, that same save file, you know, on my wife's cell phone or my cell phone, whatever. That's which, one of the things they showed at the first CS press which conference. I, I can't. Like, I'm going to buy that cell phone. I can't. Uh, are you talking about the, the Ericsson with the... the like, are they making another Sony Ericsson no. phone with the... There's no, Ericsson's not around anymore. Okay, well, whatever. It is Sony. Okay, so are they making another phone with with no. thumbsticks and buttons? It's an Xperia that looks kind of like yours, but instead mm -hmm. of, like, all this rounded bull crap, it's just a oh, that's, slab. Oh, that's just a case. No, no, but, yeah, but, you know, if we popped this... Yeah, off, yeah, I got gotcha. ...rounded edges, it is just literally a slab. It's a square slab. Yeah, it looks like something Tony Stark would use, so huh. it's like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, see, I, my thing is, it's like, okay, cool, you know, you... Play your Vita anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can stream PS3 games to your PS4. Awesome. Or your PS3 games to your Vita. Or your PS3. Off with Last of Us on the Vita. Yeah. Um, why would you want to play that on your cell phone, though? That's the thing well, that kills me. Well, that's the point. The, you, it's not that it's on your cell phone. It's that it's on everything. And your yeah. cell phone just happens to be one of those things. One of those everythings? One of those everythings. Okay. They said you'll need a DualShock 3 to be paired with it. Um, yeah. That, that, okay, that makes sense. Because I thought maybe you were like trying to do touch yeah. controls and they that would just be Shock horrible. 3, so I bet they're going to start, you're going to see like... Mad Cats isn't around anymore, but you'll see like Mad Cats come out with Esque. a case that goes around an iPod. An well, iPod and they already have something that, like that. Yeah, um, but that mimics the, the DualShock. Yeah. It's, uh, I think Moga's got something like that that pairs with phones, and, and it's yeah. it's essentially just a Xbox 360 controller that yeah. you, you know, it's Go Bluetoothed in, and it's got a little clip, so no matter what size phone you have, it works. Um, and the cool thing about this is that this is, to me, the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, this is this say, is kind of what we've been hoping hoping for out of Sony for a while, yeah. and this is what they've been promising. You know, the whole play your game as it downloads. Yeah. You know, start playing that. This kind of builds on that, and you know, hey, now you don't even have to download it. You can just you straight want, up play it. Like if you want, you start downloading it. We start streaming it to you. When you're done at that first play session, you have it installed on your hard drive. That cloud save just leaks just, to that. Poop done. Um, but it's, it's the big thing in. For me, there's been a few really big things in gaming. Yeah. When we talk about the few really big things in gaming, we talk about, you know, putting Pong in a bar and having it only be a quarter. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about having a cartridge-based delivery system. Mm -hmm. We talk about having a CD-based delivery system. We talk about having uh, online, all the time, Xbox Live, you know. This is the big thing for this generation. Yeah, but it, it's weird. It kind of gets into a weird territory, at least I think it does, of do you really own what you are playing? If, if yeah, at this point you're not downloading anything. Yeah. Like, That's I, I paid $8 or $40 or whatever it is they're going to charge yeah. you to stream a game, you know. Yeah, for the subscription, you know. Yeah, we don't. Netflix, you don't actually own those Netflix movies, but you pay them a subscription to watch it whenever yeah. you want. Yeah. 
And, and you know, developers, Netflix, you can watch anywhere, yeah, more or less. Yeah, so. developers and publishers have been trying to get us to do this for a very long mm -hmm. time with things like online passes, season passes, mm -hmm. that Call of Duty Elite, uh, Battlefield Premium. Premium. What was the one for Dragon's Age 2? No idea. Anyway. Um, of this kind of game as service. We're going mm -hmm. to sell you a game, but we also want you to take care of monetizing some mm -hmm. of the back end DLC development and patching. Yeah, and and you know they kind of do that anyway with you know just straight up DLC. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this this big premium service and, and yeah. Call of Duty Elite type stuff is, I don't know, because I I don't play to them. figure out a way to make that monetarily feasible mm -hmm. in the same way that just releasing the game again is monetarily feasible. Yeah, um, releasing the Game of the Year edition as it were. Yeah, well, and the Game of the Year editions are usually the best value anyway because yeah. you get all your stuff and and you know whatever. But so it's, publishers have been trying to figure out a way to bridge the first publishing of a game mm -hmm. to the best of uh, the, whatever super edition. Yeah. Um, and that bridge so far has been that Call of Duty Elite. Or, or Season Pass. Map Packs and stuff like that. Um, no, not even Map Packs, because you buy Map Packs. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's this true. This is a subscription-based service, basically. That's true. And Sony just won. They figured that one out. That, Let's hope. Um, what it is is we're going to sell a subscription, and this will monetize and fund not only the back end on games that are like Call of Duty, which warrant, air quotes, that Call of Duty Elite subscription, but also games that don't have that. Games like DMC, mm -hmm. Devil May Cry, that doesn't have DLC or whatever not. That doesn't have that back end. They're like, this will be good for everybody yeah. because we'll be monetizing everything. We'll, we'll be going, to, all the consumers will be subscribed in. It'll, it's kind of like the uh, ACA, the Healthcare Act. Mm -hmm. If we're all subscribing, it's cheaper for everybody. Yes. So, but I call it one of these big things, not because of that from the business side. I mean, it kind of is that from the business side, but from the consumer side, mm -hmm. or from the use side, because you and I grew up on Nintendo. So yeah. we're used to, you go get a... You, you buy your cartridge, cartridge, this is everything you get. This is the game. Enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we kind of bre uh, bridged into PC gaming with having to patch and, mm -hmm. and expansion packs in the mid 90s, you know. Yeah, I remember expansion uh, packs. I wish those still existed. Like as they are now. I mean, Blizzard's going to put one out in a couple of yeah. months for Diablo, but. The Dragon like, Age ones are really good. Yeah, Awakening, I hear, is really, really good. Awakening I never got around is, to Awakening it. Awakening is basically like one of those ones where it's just like, this is just a giant dungeon. Go have fun. Have, <laughs> knock yourself out. Um, so a lot of these things, like, so we grew up in that age, so we're used to mm -hmm. buying DLC map packs. We're used to also getting the disc. The problem is kids these days are growing up in the era of Angry Birds, of I buy it and I get all the levels as they come out, and it's just on my tablet. The tablet mm -hmm. is the thing I interact with. Yeah. And Sony go has gone, okay, well, we figured out a way to keep you new guys in your comfort mm -hmm. zone of this is the tablet, this is what I interact with, while also giving you this experience that the older experienced guys mm -hmm. have that are your maybe want the yeah. Call of Duty players and stuff like that. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't I don't buy DLC for games most of the time. Like well, yeah. I just because I once I beat a game, I'm pretty much done with it. Like yeah. I would totally have played that Assassin's Creed DLC they just came out with mm -hmm. had I, you know, had it just been like part of what I bought, but I don't it's not that I don't you know, respect. You don't have it that much. But what if, on the subscription basis, it's if you're subscribed to PlayStation Now mm -hmm. and you bought Assassin's Creed 4 so you could play it the first thing, mm -hmm. well, eventually on PlayStation Now that DLC comes yeah. as a streaming thing. You can go back and play it. Theoretically, yes. Yeah, because you already bought the, the PSN game. version. Mm -hmm. And they're also now just throwing on that DLC. The, the game now, now do we know that they're going to give us DLC as part of this? Because they could just do the base game. Like we well, don't. They've said they can do anything from the base game to they can. the fully DLC game. We don't like. We don't know anything about it because it's going been like four pay, days. So. Yeah, in terms of what you're actually going to pay for these things, mm -hmm. what they're actually going to allow, it's very different. But they've already said we've had people playing PlayStation Now against people not playing PlayStation Now just on their PS3s. Mm -hmm. Uh, they said, we've done it in Journey, we've done it in um, Last of Us multiplayer, you know, and part of that is everything has to be up to date. Yeah. So you're going to be playing the most up to date version, yeah. whether it's the most up to date version that includes the $5 map pack, we, we don't, don't know, know yet, but Sony's definitely built in for it to be the most up to date yeah. version that includes that map pack. Yeah. So I, I, my, my, my thing is, you know, 
they'll stream you the base game, and if you want to play the multiplayer, awesome. But the DLC stuff, I think, is probably going to be off limits unless well, you I pay the, the five dollars well, to I, the publisher. I think the DLC stuff will be, especially if it's like a single player story thing yeah, that's completely we'll be, optional. Off limits until like the game of the year edition yeah. comes out, and, and then when the game of the year edition, edition comes everything's... out and it's on there, yeah. Which they've already said we'll be able to add to your system. Mm -hmm. Like if you have the base game and the DLC is now free, yeah. we'll be able to stream that to you as well yeah. using the same save. Yeah. Well, Sony is really the only company that's set to do this because not only does this, you know, as far as we the, know, Microsoft well, might be working on something like this, but I believe I heard that well, their stuff is at least a year out. You would let me finish. We'll I'm sorry. There. Anyway, so not only are they doing video games, they're doing live TV mm -hmm. and movies and TV shows. They're doing TV shows specifically for PlayStation Now and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Sony, as a company, makes a big deal out of we're the only people that are there at the beginning of a project in terms of development, shooting it with the cameras, you know, all this stuff, all the way to it getting out to the masses. Being, being delivered to the public. You know, if Xbox did this, if there was an Xbox Now, you would be able to get Xbox One, uh, X, not Xbox One titles, the first Xbox titles. Original Xbox. Yeah. yeah. So, like, my, my example to someone I was talking to the other day was if all the publishers say, we're not doing this, it will be bad for our bottom line, you won't have Assassin's Creed on there, you won't have Call of Duty on there, you won't have EA on there, um, Sony can still sit there and say, fine, whatever. We'll just stream all of our stuff. Yeah, we already have, like, you know. We have a back catalog of, of. Like, do you want to play Crash Bandicoot? Fine. Here you, you go. Want to play Killzone Shadowfall? Fine. Here you go. They're on the same service. We have a wide breadth of that. If that happened to Microsoft, Microsoft would be up shit creek without a paddle. They would. They wouldn't be in as good a place. I mean, they have games, right? Like you could always go back and play your Halos and your. So Halos. So that's. Well, we'll, we'll be four plus two. That's six games. <sighs> Keep going. I mean, they, uh, let's see, Crimson Skies, I believe, Crimson was. Crimson Skies, so that's seven. Uh, there was a Conquer game on the original Xbox. Conquer? You have all the Gears you of War games. Grabbed by Ghoulies. You have, um, your, you have your Gears of War games. Like, they yeah, have seven. they have exclusives but that they the could point play. Is you are not getting the breath. Like, would you pay uh, $8 a month? To You're also talking years? about, like, Sony has an additional console. The Xbox only has two to draw on, so well, yeah, it has I'm, three plus the PSP and the Vita. Yeah, but I'm also talking about Sony has more stuff in-house. Yes, like, they do. They just have more stuff. Like, even if you discounted the PS1, mm -hmm. like, well, we'll do that. I'll give you that. We'll discount the PS1. We won't count PSP. We won't count PS Vita. If you discount the PS2 and the PS3, PS3 and these PS4 titles and the Xbox, first Xbox, the Xbox 360 and the Xbox yeah. One titles, would you pay a subscription for less than 100 titles on the Xbox that was $8 a month, or that same subscription on a PlayStation platform that's $8 a month that has over 300 titles? If I owned both, yes. I would probably only get the PlayStation one because I don't care about the Xbox. Well, but if, if I only own the Xbox, then yes, I would probably pay the $8 a month to have access to all those old titles. If because I mean, in a perfect world, we would all own everything, and or we'd all have access to the the stuff. I mean, the other thing is, whatever, is but I'm we don't. Nin if it weren't for the fact that Nintendo is allergic to the term subscription, mm -hmm. they could actually rule the roost on this. Very they could easily. because they have you know 30, 40 years worth of you know yeah. content they could push Going out. Going way back and. Being able something. to play Mario whenever you want is worth a lot more than being able to play Conquer yeah, I mean, that Fur Day whenever you want or Crash Bandicoot whenever But, they, I mean, they already have, a, and, and maybe this is just because, you know, whatever. They have their virtual console on the, on the 3DS. They, you can just download all those titles, and those titles are, like, freaking minuscule. But the other thing about that is they also have already flipped up on that part because if you buy it on the Wii... You then have to rebuy it on the Wii U. You have to rebuy it on the DS. You have to rebuy it on the yeah. Wii U. We have they they messed that up. They yes. messed that up. They're like those those purchases. But I don't think they should think have... they've messed that up. I think they think they were doing this the right way. And Sony is running that is is burning money because you can play Final Fantasy VI on the PS P, the P, Vita, Vita, and Vita, PS3. PS3, PS. Well, not the PS4 yet, but. But yeah, you can play it on three things, and you only got to pay ten bucks for it. Yeah, I think they're like, well, over here you got to pay ten bucks for it once, twice, three times a lady. Yeah. No. Um, and, you know, that, that just seems like a bad decision by so Nintendo. So I think but. you'll have a lot of publishers going into their back catalog and trying to renegotiate and figure out ways, like Square did in the late 90s, mm -hmm. of, okay, 
everyone likes Final Fantasy VII, everyone likes Final Fantasy VIII, everyone likes Final Fantasy IX. How do we get the first six on a platform where they can get to them? Yeah. Like, um, sp it, it blows my mind that Square Enix still mints, still makes Final Fantasy Origins, Final Fantasy Anthology, and Final Fantasy Chronicles. You can go buy new copies of those games right now. For the PS1? Yeah, for the PS1. Well, I mean, they don't you know. do it for seven, they don't do it for eight, and they don't do it for nine, but they still do it for those. Because those five. are those are the because one. they're like well they're still selling so we might as well you know this, yeah we have this factory in Taiwan somewhere and just pumping these discs out um, so I think you'll see a lot of people like Capcom go okay how do we renegotiate this what way do we get this so we can get all the Mega Man's on on, on PlayStation the... now how do we renegotiate this so we can get all the Tomb Raiders on PlayStation now how do we renegotiate yeah. things and I think you'll like EA sat back and said, "How do we renegotiate this so we can get all three Mass Effects on the PS3?" I think EA is going to sit back and go, "Okay, what other platforms do we own, Epic, <laughs> yeah. where we can renegotiate these things and get those things mm -hmm. on this PlayStation Now service, where we can remonetize them?" Yeah, because I mean they have those so you IPs. So might see Gears of War on PlayStation now. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. My, my, my air quotes. It yeah. Might be years. It, it just depends on. But think about this way: if if PlayStation Now ends up being the way it's going to be for the next twenty five years, Microsoft full Microsoft's game division gets sold off and and folds. Yeah. Maybe. EA, Epic, Bungie are going to be sitting on all these IPs that they basically get because the Microsoft Game Studios dissolved. And they're gonna be like, how do we remonetize these? Yeah. Well, I mean, EA is its own. It's entity, the same reason why we can play Neo Geo um, games on a PS3 right now, yeah. or on a Wii. Mm -hmm. You know, Turbo Graphics. You have you have all these IPs you got to do something with, otherwise yeah, you're just sitting on a bunch of money that's not going anywhere. Yeah, Falcom sitting there going, well, no one's buying Turbo Graphics at all, you know, <laughs> anymore now. So how do we remonetize this E series yeah. so that people keep buying them? Yeah. Well, just keep remaking the old ones. And right now, I think PlayStation Now, right now, PlayStation Now, <laughs> has yeah, the possibility, the opportunity to be the gaming thing for the next yeah. 25 years. Provided that we get decent broadband everywhere, yes. So if it works on 5 megabytes down, 5 megabytes five down, 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 it, it down. should work pretty I mean, well on a lot of Think of that AT&T 4G map they keep throwing up in your face yeah. all the time. That's the 5 megabit down. Yeah, it is. Um, um, when when it's not cloudy. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, yeah, like... Yeah. It has the potential. The bandwidth I is there. Think, I don't think you're going to see games go away as a physical product. No. Um, but what I think is going to happen is you're going to see the in-between download space mm -hmm. of buying a digital copy of Battlefield and buying yeah. a digital copy. I think you're going to see that go away. Like, it's not going to download your... your Home computer. Uh, it's not going to download to your system anymore. System anymore. No. Um, well, because it's going to be in a, in easier, a, faster, smarter for them to do it this way. In a, in a maybe in five years. Right now, well, I think that's also the other thing that I think Sony and all they're playing the long come, game. I, th I think they're playing the long game, and they're going. Google Fiber works. Yeah, it does. And it, it does. works in such a way that people want it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's now the number one ISP in Kansas City. Yeah, uh, because as soon as it gets to some place and, and people are like, holy like, crap, I want this, go. Yeah. They're like, fiber works. Fiber so all it's going to be is the companies, the ISP holder companies, going, okay, we need to branch out to mm -hmm. not just Kansas City, but North Kansas City. Not just North Kansas City, but Ottawa, Kansas. Not yeah. just Ottawa, Kansas, but Wellsville, Kansas is actually smaller than Ottawa, Kansas. Yeah, yeah. And so like once they start branching, and I think you'll see... You won't see this at the start of the PS4 mm. generation. You won't see it for another couple of years. But in six years, seven years, I think you might not see a PlayStation 5. I think you'll see... You think you'll just see them start streaming? Yeah, I think you'll see PlayStation 5 quality games streamed off the service onto you. Uh, and, you know, then, and game, the then, then game developers aren't, aren't I don't want to say hamstrung, but aren't, yeah. you know, stuck with, okay, this is the box, these are the yeah, constraints we have Sony to work with. Goes, here are the specs for this year. Here are the specs for next year. Yeah, here, here, here. make do. this game and go. Yeah, here's the x86 architecture. Keep going. Or, um, you know, whatever, whatever new stuff comes out in yeah. the next five years. And I think the real game-changing thing, and when we call it the big thing, and we'll, we'll wrap up mm -hmm. with this, is when we, I call it the big thing is that it's not just on your Vita, on your PSP, on your PS3, on your PS4, on your Sony Bravia TV, on your Sony Xperia. In, in a few years, on it'll be on Sony. anything that has an internet they connection. They are like, we are working on an Android app. We are working on an iPhone app. 
And it, it may work on your smart TV. They were like, it might work on your Roku box. It might work on your Xbox One. That would be awesome. Wouldn't it, though? <laughs> they put a, Sony puts an Xbox that One out. That would be like the largest middle, like, the but, only but, way but, there but, could but be see a then, but, middle finger to Microsoft is if Sony built a giant skyscraping middle finger right outside of Redmond. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem with that would be you'd still have to pay for Xbox Live in order to play it. Bazinga. Oh, you have to you have to double pay like you do for, for Netflix and Hulu. So anyway, don't forget to spend your Pokemon. Uh, we will be back next week, the weather permitting, and my science Andy, Andy not one of us not uh, dying of, of the flu. If you like the podcast, don't forget to share it with your friends. Put it on your Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter. Share us on Reddit. YouTube. It'll be up Reddit. on Reddit some time later. All those things. And tell your friends. Once again, don't forget to spend your Pokemon. We'll see you next week.